What's going on everybody? It's your boy Zoe with No Days Off DFS here to bring you another WNBA slate breakdown for the three game WNBA slate. For some reason, we didn't have any games yesterday. We got three games on the dock today, so hopefully we can go ahead and break this down and make some money. If you guys are new here and you're enjoying the content, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the news that we're putting out over here for all the sports that we will be covering going on as we continue to grow this channel. Drop a like button if any of this information is helping you win some money. And with that being said, let's go. Now, I'm going to be honest. Looking back at what? Tuesday slate was not the best slate we had the plays, had the plays in the right spots, legit, just some dud performances. Dallas just completely shit the bed and completely got blown out. Expected a blowout, but not to that caliber of where they could not put up more than, what, 30 points in the first half. That was horrible. Completely, completely horrible. And then um, I know we had a couple of other blowout games, but that Dallas game, that really just tipped the cake for me because messed up with um having, you know, uh, Chelsea Gray and some um, other players that I was on. Of course, if you played Young or you played Plum, Plum practically played the whole game. She played 35 minutes still. So, it's, of course, just trying to peg the right one that's going to get the extra burn and run and crap in these games when it comes down to the aces. That was just so frustrating. Asia Wilson was able to still break 40-plus in that game, but the Dallas, they, they just did not come through at all whatsoever in that game. And it was it was just putrid. It was a horrible, horrible freaking game all over. And then, I mean, when we look at some of the other games, the the Fever and the Sparks, that game wasn't bad besides the fact that, of course, being on Erica Wheeler in that game, Erica Wheeler got pulled, did not play the whole fourth quarter. So that was really trash right there. Really messed up one of my um one of my six picks over on prize picks if Erica Wheeler would have just been able to play. But a lot of turnovers in that game for her, and it just was not it for Erica Wheeler. But Leah Boston still rolling was playing very well. The Lynx in the Sky game, that was actually a pretty good game. The Lynx, they came in to play, um, played really hard. Elizabeth Williams, she went out there, she did her thing. And then also... Uh, Marbury, Copper, they didn't do too bad on their side. Then the Washington Mystics and the Phoenix Mercury, uh, Cloud just, I, I just don't understand. That was just completely crap. Honestly, just a crap game all around in this one right here. Just very, very frustrating. I'm, I'm just going to put it out there. The players, they were in the right spots. Just the performance was completely and utter shit. Going to be very honest. It was just shit. But that's why it's called DFS, because we get to play this daily, and that's why bankroll management is important, because now we get to go ahead and break down another three-game slate and try to win our money back and just be up for the week. Looking at it, we got the Minnesota Lynx taking on the Indiana Fever. This game hopefully will be a good game, should be a close game, but I do have the Minnesota Lynx coming out on top on this one. They are rolling. They have gotten their best player back in Fee, and already twice this season in this matchup, Fee has gone off. Um, of course, Jessica Shepard, she's uh, back. She's playing very well in her role. She will hopefully, if they don't decide they want to put Dorka back into the starting lineup, she is probable, listed as probable, but should be playing off the bench because I would imagine they want to keep Shepard in the starting lineup. Uh, Shepard, she'll be matching up with Leah Boston, um, hopefully. And then, of course, Lindsay Allen, Kelly McBride, Diamond Miller. Um, of course, the Fever, they are a lowly team. Uh, defense is not there. They allow opponents to score over 80-plus a game going up against them, which will be really great for this Minnesota Lynx team who is rolling on all cylinders and looks to be gelling at the right time. Um, over here for the Fever, no injury news to report for them. Going over to the Connecticut Sun, taking on Phoenix Mercury. No injury news for the Sun. Phoenix Mercury, Shea Petty, she will still be out. So uh, we got that one right there. Then for the Land of Dream, no news for them. And then unfortunately for the Seattle Storm, our girl Gabby the Batty, she is going to be out. Sadly. Um, I want to say it was a stress fracture in her foot or something like that. So she's out for the rest of the season. That's really sad considering that Gabby sat out for most of the season to overseas obligations, came back, and then she's just... Um, you know, got injured, uh, was rolling, was really getting into the offense, was looking really good out there in her time that she was playing. Um, so definitely a really sucky injury to have this late into the season. Going over the DraftKings, the site that I play the most on the site that has been fairly pretty decent, that we have a Queen of the Court uh, contest ticket to, which will be coming up next week. I cannot wait for this uh, this contest. I'm pretty sure it's next week. Let me make sure I'm not tripping and um, I miss my, my ticket. Okay, yeah. the contest will be held next week on August the 18th. Let's go ahead. Let's let's look at what slate that is going to actually be. Going over to our lovely DraftKings. I'm only kind of buying time, guys, because there's really not too much to break down on the slate. All right, so we're going to have a one, two, three, four, five game slate. Wings taking on the sun. Oh, that'll be mm, decent. Mystics and the fever, depending on what kind of mystics we get. Hopefully, they might have some players back. Hopefully, that's not going to be uh, too bad for us to look at for that one. The sky taking on the dream. That should be a good, good, some good DFS fantasies from that one. Liberty and the Mercury. 
Definitely some juiciness on the Liberty side in this one. And then the Lynx taking on the Storm, that should be a good game to close it all out. So not a bad slate to actually have a queen of the court. Um, so we got 10 teams out of the 12 that will be playing. Definitely hope that the Mystics, their stuff is out and good and, and at least get one game with their their starters back before we get this uh, this game right here. That would be really important, at least to me, um, line of building wise. But definitely going to be really interesting to see how injuries and stuff pan out in the next couple of um of days and stuff. All right, going over to DraftKings. Like I said, if you guys would like to join me over here on DraftKings, check the link down in the description below so you guys can get that deposit match bonus and join me over here on the King. Starting out with the first game of the slate, we got the Lynx taking on the Fever. Going over to the Lynx side, like we've already said, Fee already twice, twice this season in this exact same spot, going up against the Indiana Fever, a team who I've already said they are allowing over 80 plus points to opposing teams. And you already know Fee, she's the catalyst for this team. She's going to lead them. She's going to lift them. In 33 minutes when she played going up against them, she dropped 51 fantasy points. Um, that was one of her games. Let's see if we have the other one here. Oh, yeah, we do. Right here. In 32 minutes, she also dropped 48.5 fantasy points. So you already guys already know that Fee, she's a, a scorer. She's going to go out there and score. And over on Price Picks, if they have her below anything of 18, 19, or something like that, I would definitely take the over on Fee in this matchup and in this spot, just considering that she's already gone over it twice. We do know that. She is going to be the leader in regards to shot attempts and everything that she's going to go out there and do already. Um, the Fever, I'm not scared of their defense at all whatsoever. we just seen NECA go out there, and she just dropped, what, um, 28, 29 points, rebounds all together and everything that she does. And she's playing the forward position right now. She's not playing that center spot um, and everything because they got Stevens and Hamby down there uh, playing that. So we already know that the, the Fever, they will give it up to opposing power forwards and small forwards and things like that and feed the uses that she has. You might as well go ahead and smash it over on that if you're looking for a prop play. Diamond Miller, this is definitely a spot where last game she really didn't have it going scoring-wise, but she still was able to put up 28 point, 25 fantasy points. A lot of that was due to the fact that she yanked down 11 rebounds, 2 assists, 1 block, and 3 steals. So her defense was shining in this game, and she played over 30 minutes. Now, this has always been the biggest thing with Diamond Miller, the minutes, the minutes, the minutes, because they play around her minutes far and in between um, whenever she's on the court. So I will say if she's going to get the 30 plus minutes, she's definitely in a prime spot to be a GPP play uh, in this position. I don't believe that we actually have gotten the um, Diamond Miller and Aaliyah Boston uh, game yet this season where both rookies are going up against each other. I know Aaliyah Boston, she kind of has that rookie of the year thing wrapped up simply just because Diamond Miller got injured. But if Diamond actually got to play throughout the season, I really do believe that she could have been, um, you know, neck and neck with her because her production might have actually been there, especially if they would have let her play through a lot of the mistakes that she was making out there on the court. That's neither here nor there. Sorry, but I'm um, Don Miller definitely in a GPP position. I do like going and looking at her today if you want to come down off of someone like Fee. But Fee, of course, she's in the best spot. I'm um, really smash potential for her here in this position. Jessica Shepard, Dorka with Dorka being back, she's not gonna do anything but split some minutes with Jessica Shepard. Still, Jessica Shepard, if you don't want to pay up for Fee, you can come down here to Jessica Shepard. I don't mind that right here. We know Jessica, she can go out there, she get some blocks, she get some steals, but she's going to do it on the peripheral side. We just need her to go ahead and make sure she's scoring out there. Double digit scoring is what we want from her when she she is out there. In 34 minutes the last time when they played going up against the inning and a fever, she only dropped 18.75 fantasy points. Definitely a GPP option. Not telling you that you have to play her. I will be a little bit limited to her since they will have Dorka back and they have like the production that Dorka has given them throughout the season. Now, a player that I don't normally uh, talk up or go to on slates is Kayla McBride. But if you guys just seen what Jordan Canada and um, Clarendon just went out there and did going up against the Indiana Fever. You already know Kayla McBride is in a prime spot as opposing guards. Twos, threes, and ones can go out there and have their way with the Indiana Fever because Erica Wheeler, um, Kelsey Mitchell do not play defense at all whatsoever. So definitely Kayla McBride is on the docket on today to definitely be played. In 37 minutes last time she played going up against them, she had 35.5 fantasy points. And then let's see. 35 minutes, she dropped 24.25 fantasy points. So definitely, we have a range of 20 to 30 plus fantasy points that we can get from Kayla McBride in this position. And if we look at what she's done over her last five games, she's given us at least 20 plus fantasy points in all five of her last uh, last five games. Definitely in consideration, especially just due to the matchup and the position that she will be in at 7-9. I love that value for her. And if you want to come down to uh, Lindsay Allen, definitely is in consideration. I'm not really too high on her because she's not really out there to score. We know that's not what she's going to go out there and do. 
She can if she has to, but she won't. Normally, she's going to go out there and get the peripherals with the assists and just play pretty good hard defense. Um, but the ball's not in her hands too often. Um, really, especially with Fee being back, Fee, she's going to go ahead and command all that usage and do everything that she does out there on the court. Um, I would rather take a chance on Kelly McBride because especially if she gets hot, just like we've seen the Sparks just do last game going up against the Fever, I would rather go ahead and play McBride in this position. Everyone else, my bench riders, my, my blowout queens, and well, I, I'll, I'll give the Minnesota Lynx. They, they'll be bench riders um, because they, they don't they don't come in in a blowout. They come in anyway. Uh, Banham, Powers, Clarendon, all of them, you already know their GPPs just because we don't know what the rotation will be. I will stick to the starters in this position over here for the Minnesota Lynx and um, those ones that are really highlighted. Going over here to the Indiana Fever, Leah Boston, of course, the way that she's been playing over these last several games. I love what I'm seeing finally from Leah Boston. And again, in this matchup already twice a season, Aaliyah Boston has played very well in um in the back-to-back games that she has had going up against Minnesota Lynx. 38 minutes, she dropped 40.25 fantasy points going up against them. And in 33 minutes, she dropped 35.75 fantasy points. Definitely a double-double uh, chance for her here. She only had nine rebounds in that, that second matchup. But the scoring upside is there, and I love to see that from her. Um, like we just said, we just seen Stevens. We just seen... um. Oh, not Stevens. Uh, who did um, Minnesota just play last? I'm messing myself up right now, y'all. Lynx, they just played Sky. Oh, we just seen Elizabeth Williams. Elizabeth Williams go out there and just destroy the centers for the Minnesota Lynx. Easy. Just went, She just went out there and did it. She had the block. She had the steals. She had the points. She had the rebounds. So you put Aaliyah Boston, a much better offensive threat out there in his position, the exact same position that we just seen Elizabeth Williams in. I love this for Aaliyah Boston here in this spot, especially considering that I know that the total for this game is the second highest total on the slate. But still, it's a good enough total, good enough spread. 161.5 should definitely be a little bit higher than that. Um, nonetheless, like I said, I got the Minnesota Lynx winning this game, so we already know that they're going to have to put their best foot forward. Aaliyah Boston, her minutes have finally somewhat been there over her last couple of games. She's been very consistent over her last four games. I'm expecting more of a 40 to 50 piece from her in this position, in this spot, and I love going to her here. Kelsey Mitchell, Nalissa Smith, Eric Wheeler, Victoria Vivians. Uh, Smith, she came back in that last game. She played 18 minutes off the bench. I would expect her to still be on a minutes limit since it is a foot injury that she's coming back from. With Smith being back, that messes with Vivians, that messes with Cannon, um, and currently, quite frankly, they have them way too priced up. Same thing for Smith. All of them are way too priced up for their um the minutes and the roles that they're all, all eating into right now. Until we see a more hard cut of what Melissa Smith's minutes are, 8-5, that's way too much personally um, that I won't be spending for that. Kelsey Mitchell, always your GPP option if you want to go there. We know we can attack them in the links with opposing guards. Um, depending on which guard is actually going to go off, is it going to be Kelsey Mitchell's to still roll out here? Is Erica Wheeler going to bounce back after coming off of a crappy performance in 17 minutes with six turnovers, no points, four assists, and two rebounds? Can she come out here going up against the Minnesota Lynx, who she's already played twice this season? 30 minutes dropped 23 uh, fantasy points, and 24 minutes she dropped 17 fantasy points. I'm not too sure. I'm not sure if I want to go to that. Just considering what Grace Berger just went out there and did in that last game, came off the bench and gave a, a really great spark to them. In 22 minutes dropped 27 fantasy points, 14 points, 4 assists, 2 rebounds, a block, a steal. Um, definitely in consideration just because they, they talked her up in the postgame presser in regards to what she went out there and did. So um, I will have a little bit of interest in Grace Berger, um, GVP option, and Kelsey Mitchell. I will fade Erica Wheeler until I actually see her get back on the high horse. And everyone else, just because Melissa Smith is back, I'm not going to mess with them. Of course, Lexi Hell, she's going to hold her spot into the starting lineup, so you can go there as a GVP option, but not going to really mess with that outside of my girl, Aaliyah Boston, the primary piece I want from that team. Going over to the Phoenix Mercury, taking on the Connecticut Sun. The Connecticut Sun, you already know that they should, not even should, they, they're going to win this game. Um, if, if you can't tell, I've already pretty much given you a two-piece parlay if you want to go with some money lines. Minnesota Lynx and the Connecticut Sun um, feel very, very strongly about that. And then going into the last game, I, I got a teeter on that one, but I kind of got a choice where I think that one's going to go. But um, definitely pretty strong in the Minnesota Lynx and the Connecticut Sun just with the way that both these teams play. There's no reason the Sun should lose this matchup at all whatsoever. Even if they got Diana Ross who's playing at a really great level over her past several games since coming back, breaking the record and everything she's done. And on top of that, um, Cunningham finding her shot, her stroke, and Brittany Griner just being Brittany Griner, not really doing too much, and is just there. Um, yeah. Sun should still come out on top because they got one of the better players and Alyssa Thomas, who goes out there and does everything, is a Swiss Army knife. Um, I know the last time that they matched up going up against the the um, Phoenix Mercury, she really didn't go out there and have the greatest game in the world. She played 40 minutes and only dropped 31 fantasy points. I want that 50 to 70-ish if she's going to play the whole game, you know? 
We, we, that's, that's what we would actually want. Now, they lost that game going 66 and 72. So you know that they got to come back out here and get their get back in this game. And nonetheless, the best player on the slate and the best player on the team is Alyssa Thomas to go out there and do what she does. Rebounding, assisting, and getting some points. Um, now, the choice is, am I going to pay up that 13000 to play Alyssa Thomas? That is the choice that you have to make. If it messes up your lineup and you're not going to have a balanced lineup or you can't find the value, maybe you do play a Grace Berg in order to get an Alyssa Thomas. I'm not saying that she is necessarily needed just for the fact that she does have the tougher matchup going up against Brittany Griner because we have seen, I don't know how, I really don't know how, but the Phoenix Mercury have limited opposing centers going up against them. That's the only thing that puts me off of Alyssa Thomas, even though she is technically the best player on the slate. Outside of fee. Now, Dewana Bonner. If I'm not going to play AT, definitely have to look at Dewana Bonner on the road. We know that she takes and she commands all the usage. She gets the shots. And she's going to go out there and she's going to play her ass off. She's going to play her skin a little ass off and go out there and do what she got to do. Um, looking at Bonner on the slate, definitely in consideration. Last time playing going up against her former team, she played 38 minutes and dropped 40 fantasy points. I'll go right back to that. And if Price Picks or anyone else still has her points at 18 or 18.5, take the over. She does average roughly 19 to 20 points on the road. She scores better on the road because she is always having to pick up that slack. Now, Tiffany Hayes, Heidemann, Rebecca Allen, Odo, Carrington, all these players are in play. We know for a fact, especially the guards, we take opposing guards going up against the Phoenix Mercury. Tiffany Hayes going out there last time she played, 28 minutes, and she gave us only 18 fantasy points. Heidemann, the up and down, don't know what I want to do, don't know if I want to actually play really good player. Again, another GPP option. Eh, kind of teetering, don't really want to even look at her. I would rather come down here and look at Carrington and look at our girl, um, Tisha Harris. Tisha Harris, she has my interest just because the minutes have gone up over her last couple games. And we do know if she gets the minutes and burn, she can go out there and she definitely can produce for us, especially if Heidman's having a bad game or Hayes goes ahead and gets herself into some foul trouble. Last time playing up against the Phoenix Mercury, she played 24 minutes and gave us 15 fantasy points. At 4-6, I really don't hate that for her, especially if you're not going to go down to a Grace Burger on the slate. Now, um, Dejanet Carrington, she pretty much has that six woman of the role, uh, six six woman uh, role locked up for the season. Last time playing against the Phoenix Mercury, she only played 13 minutes, but she did give us 15.75 fantasy points. Definitely an option if you would rather just come up and get to Carrington. I do know that um, Harris, she can be a little iffy if she's going to actually get her minutes. But like I said, between those two, they are the ones that really uh, garner all the usage and stuff off the bench and will get those those minutes. Um, definitely, if you can just pay up for Carrington, it is only a 400 difference. I would probably go there because that might be safer for you going over to the phoenix mercury um diane Zarossi, she's going to be in play for me simply just because she's been popping off and going off left and right and it's it's really been miraculous and crazy to see um especially considering that she looked crappy uh really before she got injured and before um the all-star break and everything but has come out and in four out of her last five games has dropped over 30 plus fantasy points now the game going up against the connecticut sun this will be a tougher matchup for her considering that the sun they do play their opposing guards very well in 30 minutes she did drop 29.75 fantasy points so definitely an option for us to go to because they are going to need dt to take over and actually go out here and score that being said Brittany griner at the same time like i've said numerous times before the Sun are playing technically with someone who's not a center. AT is not a center. So Brittany Griner should have the matchup to actually go out here and dominate. It's whether or not if she's not going to be lazy and actually do it. With that being said, she is a 10,000% GPP play because the last time that I endorsed Brittany Griner, she went out there and played 24 minutes. Granted, Washington Mystics didn't do what they were supposed to do and only dropped 29.5 fantasy points. So... Definitely a consideration, but not really going too high on Brittany Griner. I do like Diana Rossi and uh, Sophie Cunningham. I'm out here in this spot. Sophie, last game, played 24 minutes, gave us 26.25 fantasy points. It's looking like she is kind of finding her stroke and is um is shooting at a much higher clip. Last time going up against the Sun, she played 32 minutes and she dropped 34 fantasy points. So I do like Cunningham for some value that she will give us. If you can't pay her for DT, land on Cunningham. That is not going to be a bad option or a price for you here um, on the slate. Now, we do know that Shea Petty is going to be out. So, of course, Mariah Jefferson, Shook Sutton, they're going to get their minutes. They're going to get the burn. They're going to go out there and play. Uh, Sutton, not a bad option. Played 15 minutes last time. Dropped 15 fantasy points going up against them. Mariah Jefferson, if you want to go there. But I just feel like she's priced way up uh, too high. Same thing for Megan. Megan, she's going to get maybe, what, 15, 60? Yeah, 15, 60 minutes. That's way too much for a player um, that I don't, I really don't see why you still have her priced up so much. And so, hi, Brittany Griner's back. She's not She's not needed to, to do what she's doing right there. At 7 
for that's a ridiculous price for um megan and i'm, I'm not gonna play that on you when she's kind of seemed like she's just falling off of a cliff for some reason i don't know what's going on with her she was playing so well and all of a sudden she's really just teetered down to the um bottom side of everything but with um petty being out we can look at uh kata kata last game she did go out there and play 15 minutes gave us 6.25 fantasy points if you think she can go out here going up against the sun and do a little bit more she only played one minute in that game before no stats but definitely um a gpp deep gpp option not something that i'm truly endorsing but just something that you can keep your eye on if you want to consider it going over to the land of dream taking on the storm um pretty much this game Straight to the point, of course, Ryan, Gray, Ryan, GPP option. Long as she goes off, she scores, she can get her rebounds and stuff. She's going to do what she does. But Alicia Gray on the other side, more consistent and steady. I will always go to Alicia Gray over Ryan Howard. You guys already know my opinion and my thoughts on that every single time whenever I look at the dream. Um, definitely should be a firecracker back and forth matchup. 32 minutes last time, she dropped 32 fantasy points in this position. I do like going to Alicia Gray, especially if it does become a shootout. Uh, we do know that Gray, she can get to the line, and she is uh, also um, going to get the assists and the rebounds. Now, Cheyenne Parker, this is a matchup that she should be able to actually go out here and have a decent game, uh, especially if they're going to have uh, fan cam trying to guard her. She played 22 minutes in this position, only dropped 24.5 fantasy points with 18 points and 6 rebounds. Over her last three or four games, she really has been um, getting a lot more shots. 13, 17, 13 shots, and they're really looking for her. So I do have a lot of interest in looking at going to Cheyenne Parker here um, on the slate. And then also, if they have her field goals made today at like a 4.5 or a 5, 5.5, definitely enticed to take the over on that, considering, like I said, she's been on a roll over the last three games, um, at least as long as she's getting 25 to 28 or some minutes. Uh, going up against fan cam, I don't see why she should not be able to to really get her scoring going. Played Seattle last time. She went 6 of 7 out there. Uh, let's see. I want to say they played more than once this season. But um, definitely uh, another um, prop play that you can go to today and an uh, option that I have. Nia Coffey looks like she's kind of back to being on trackish. Uh, three out of her last four games, she dropped over 20 fantasy points. Going up against the Storm earlier in the season, she played 18 minutes and gave us 16.75 fantasy points. I will endorse going to coffee today. So, of course, you know what cup of coffee you're going to get. You're going to get all black, shitty tasting, just dirt coffee today. So, fake coffee at your own risk. But understand, I am on coffee today, so that's definitely going to mean that coffee is going to go out here and shit the bed. But the matchup is definitely going to be there for coffee. Coffee should be able to go out here and have a pretty decent game. Looking at what she did, um, I know I'm pretty sure that they played more than once this season. Nope, they only played once. All right, so in 18 minutes, she did go out there and drop 17 fantasy points. They are giving up roughly 24.75 fantasy points to opposing power forwards. That is a position that Coffee is going to go out there and play. As long as she doesn't get yanked and she gets her minutes secured, I do like going to Coffee today. Um, Ari McDonald, Daniel Robinson, Billings, uh, Haley Jones, all these guys. Only out of them, Ari McDonald, just because we know she's going to be the firecracker, the spark off the bench. As long as she's going to get her minutes, she is definitely in play, and as long as her shot is falling. Over here for the Storm, with Gabby going down, of course, Sam. Sammy, she's already been thrust into a starting lineup at 6'8". I like the price for her. Definitely can rock with going with some Sammy. Um, guards, they have been decent going up against the Atlanta Dream. In 20 minutes, she dropped 15.75 fantasy points against them last time. Worth an option to look going back to her. With Gabby going down, I would expect Nurse to slide back into the starting lineup. I don't think that they will put anyone else. Maybe, maybe they might put Horston, but I do doubt that because Horston is technically like their spark off of the bench for them so um just keep an eye out on the starting lineup for that but Horston at eight if they do start Horston I don't mind going to that but um this is definitely a bounce back spot for Jewel Lloyd who's coming off of one of her poorer shooting outings dropping only 11 points going up against the sun so an option that we can go to if you want to get up to that GPP option but if you can't I would definitely come down here to the uh Sammy Wickham easy um Last game, 28 minutes, only gave us 27 fantasy points. Of course, that was going up against Connecticut Sun. When she did play going up against the Dream earlier, she played 26 minutes and did not score in that game. So she was still able to go give us 20.5 fantasy points. Imagine what she can actually get us if she was actually to score. We'd be looking at probably one of these 40 to 30 fantasy point games, which is why I definitely do like going to Easy Magma Girl on the slate, especially if you're not going to pay up for a Jewel Lloyd or if you're not going to pay down for a Sammy Wakeham. Um, outside of that, everyone else, uh, fan cam, just because maybe she should definitely see her minutes. Uh, but um, that last game, I really feel like that was because Gabby went down, so they were actually able to go ahead and run her. She played 28 minutes. She dropped 28.5 fantasy points. Last time going up against the Dream, she played 21 minutes, and she gave us 20 fantasy points. That was on the end of her really good run. We can see if this game right here has definitely sparked her 
Fisher to come back and actually give us some really good performances, but she definitely will be a GPP option nonetheless. Uh, same thing for Mercedes Russell, who I know her minutes have been up and down and have been um, at least seeing the court once again. GPP option, especially at 3-7. And then Jade Melbourne, she made us a little surprise uh, pop-up on the last game. Played 13 minutes and gave us 12 fantasy points. Again, she's, she has a lot of DMPs in between that time frame, so definitely not a play that you want to go and plant your flag on same thing for Holmes and um Yvonne Turner these players they don't really play they play far and in between if they're going to actually get up there on the court the game has to be kind of a blowout in order for them to get on the court so not worth going down here um past Kia Nurse but definitely look at Kia Nurse simply she is going to get the start if they don't start Horston um played against the dream played 16 minutes gave us seven fantasy points she is I'm not gonna lie not really all that great so um yeah depends on what you want to punch your flag on that one right there guys all right guys that's going to be it for me on today's slate if you guys have any questions talk to me down in the comment section hit me up on uh the discord and hopefully we go ahead and we cash out and we get this money on today's slate with that being said it's your boy zo i will see you guys in the green <laughs>